Brought to you by DigiKey, I and PI, we look at the latest and greatest new product introductions, hence the name NPI this week is ST. Lady Ada, what is this week's I on NPI? Okay, this one, um, I thought this was pretty cool because I'm starting to see more situations where like the price of microcontrollers is getting so small that companies are just like throwing microcontrollers with anything into like a mix and making little bento boxes. Um, and we've covered, I think before, like a uh, great uh, ST we had um, the, the LoRa radio combined with a uh, STM32 G0 series. Um, well, this week, it's the ST Spin 32. Actually, it's the G02, but the image says F02. Um, so this is a combination chip that's a three-phase brushless DC motor controller with a ARM Cortex M0 STM32 G0 chipset. I'll have the exact chipset later, but um, 64 megahertz clock, 64K flash, 8K RAM. So not like a big chip, but it does have a bunch of peripherals. It doesn't have USB, it doesn't have CAN, but it does have I2C, SPI, UART, uh, timers, ADC, etc. Um, and it's built all into one package so that you can um, have really tight integration with your sensors and your brushless controller, which you probably, you know, instead of, you know, you could have it all in one and like your main microcontroller is also connected to the controller or you can have this as a peripheral that's controlled by a more complicated controller um that's like your main mi microprocessor um and then it you know can communicate over i squared c spr uart and all the timing temperature monitoring power control and you know whatever your uh complex motor control can all run on a dedicated core but um at a low price uh, so most hobbyists, and especially me, like the motors that we tend to use are uh, from this image. Oh, can you like, is it possible to uh, squish it? Unsquish it. Squish it. It was it's, it was squished because I want to show the the motors. Show a little. Yeah, there you go. Um, so you've got your stepper motor on the right, your DC motors at the bottom, and then two servo motors. And servo motors actually are just like DC brushed motors, but with a feedback control system. Um, so a lot of people, you know, when you're making a small toy or a small robot, you'll, you'll use a DC brushed motor, which you see below, they have two wires. And the way they work is there's a permanent magnet and then uh, the commutator in the middle, uh, the armature, and it has these, uh, I think the yellow and blue things in these images are the brushes. And they, they literally are brushes like made out of metal that allow the um, stator to maintain contact with the um, electrical input, even while it's rotating. Um, and these work fine. The only issue is that they are, um, they have a lot of electrical noise. The brushes eventually do go bad. And so the motors have to be replaced. Um, and uh, I'm trying to remember the third thing is, I think they're you know, basically they're unreliable long term. They eventually do do break and they're sensitive to vibration. So the other alternative is um, the other motor that I showed was a stepper motor, and a stepper motor doesn't have brushes. It's a it's a brushless design because instead it has four or some multiple of four windings, and um, there's a, you know a magnetic toothy um, a, a, axle and then like a toothy outer ring and as the um as each phase of the motor activates the um those teeth move the motor forward by like you know one degree or one and 0.8 degrees at a time so this isn't the thing about stepper motors is they're not very fast um but they do have like precise motor control and they can like stay still so what we want though for you know if you have something that isn't a toy, like anything that is a white good or automotive or um, industrial technology where you want to have the motor last a long time and you want it to spin quickly so a stepper motor isn't going to be fast enough, you want a brushless motor, which looks a lot like a stepper motor. It's kind of the same idea. You have, um, you know, multiple of three usually uh, number of coils, and as they turn, they rotate the inner magnetic axle around and there's no brush, but the off the, you know, but the trade-off is 
the DC motors, you just give them like DC power and they just want to give it plus five volts or negative five volts and it rotates plus or, you know, forward or backwards. You can PW to change the speed. With um, brushless motors, you have to have precision control of the three phases. So each of those, like the stepper, each phase has to be turned on and off exactly at the right timing to make sure that you have the smooth motion. So you can't do it without like digital electronics controlling it. This is like a, a lovely a floppy disk. Um, uh, motor. And that said, you know, they're not that much more expensive than DC motors. It's just the driving circuitry is a little bit more complicated. Um, so normally you would get a three-phase brushless DC motor driver like this, you know, L623Q from, I uh, did, uh, that stock, the DigiKey from ST. And they often either have SPI or sometimes I squared C, but usually parallel control where you control each of the three phases um and you you tell it which phase you want on off and then you also read um you know back emf for to tell how much torque you're putting out or you measure the current or you measure the voltages um but then you would have you do have to wire this up and again the timing has to be perfect like you can't miss a single pulse unlike the pwm for a um dc motor which you can just set a timer going and it just runs with these you have to like have each phase go and sometimes there's a peripheral that helps you but you still have to you know maintain um this you know to maintain smooth speed and you know, if you want to speed up or slow down or to break uh you can't have any interruption so you would have normally like a dedicated microcontroller or a dedicated microcontroller peripheral for the st spin 32 g0 series You've got your G031, which I think we covered the G0 series. It's like the STM's new low power, um, like super low power, low cost ARM Cortex series. And in the body of the chip, which you see here, like the outer round rectangle is the body of the chip. Inside is bonded basically one of those parallel um, BLDC drivers on the right with your classic STM32 on the left. So they're connected together. But in one package, just makes wiring simpler. Um, you know, it's like you've got this tight integration. You don't have to worry about having two components. You pick and place one thing, um, probably going to be more reliable. Um, and also, it has really good specs. So the chip um, is programmed basically identical to, you know, the STM32G0 you expect. It's exactly the same chip inside, which means you would use the same STM32 cube, the same uh, SW debugging, the same IDE, same program, everything's the same. And then um, you can use any of the peripherals. Obviously, they're, they're going to pick a chip that has example code ready to go to control the um, brushless motor driver. So you could probably get started with their example code that's like designed for this sub chip type. And it doesn't have like it's not a ton of flash, not a ton of RAM, but it is enough to like like I said, I think this would be really good as a subprocessor. Well, either if you have a simple white good where it's like, okay, you want to, uh, you know, control a motor on like a blender or something, and you want to control some simple buttons and maybe have some blinking LEDs or something, temperature monitoring, this would do a fine job at that kind of white good. Or you could have it as a subprocessor where you have like your Cortex M7 or greater or M4 or M33 running your device and handling the GUI and the touch and whatever. And then it sort of kind of subcontracts out the commands for the motor control, just microprocessor. Probably, you know, if you're looking at um, driving multiple motors, this is going to be nicer than trying to like time sequence it on your M7 while it's also doing GUI stuff, while it's also doing um, your know, touch or sensing. Also, of course, if you want to connect this to something that's running like embedded Linux, where you're not going to get very good um, real-time uh, reactivity because it's not a real-time operating system. Another nice thing I saw is uh, it does have, you know, of course, all the inputs and some of them are 5 volt tolerant. So that'd be handy if you want to connect this up to a CAN controller as well. And then the way it works is that like, you know, it's your QFN, I think it's, it's a 72 QFN, but like not really because like a lot of the pins are missing. So all the pins that will be connected inside to the VLDC controller are not brought out. And then instead you've got on that right hand side isolated out are the three phase controllers. So those are for each of the three phases for the um, H bridges that you'll have to connect on the other side.
Um, there are a couple of versions of this. This, you know, there's the individual um, motor drivers and controllers at the bottom, the L, you know, six, two, three, four, et cetera. And then on the upper half are the ones that have the, you, you see the ST uh, spin 32. The F0 is the, the previous version. Um, so this version goes from the uh, STM32 F0 series to the G0 again. It's kind of the more modern version, um, more available, lower power. There's an eval board if you want to get started. So you can see the um, ST spin 32 on the kind of the bottom middle there. And then in the middle, middle right, you see the six FETs and a little bit of circuitry. So you can't connect the motor directly up to this chip. It doesn't have the power capability because you need like gigantic FETs. So instead, you're going to have to pick up six FETs, which, you know, they can recommend, uh, or you can just check out the eval board and what they used. Two for each phase to make the bridge, and then that will control um, each coil in your motor. And you can, you know, the, the drivers can do like 60 plus amps or 100 amps or whatever, however much you can heat sink. But the you don't need separate MOSFET drivers. The MOSFET driver is built into the ST Spin 32. So it does simplify things quite a bit because you don't have like two stages of control. Um, this is the uh, IGBT used on that eval board. Um, so like I said, you know, it can do up to 650 volts, uh, 10 plus amps. And then the chip itself is in stock and available. There's a version that can do, I think, half an amp and or like 400 milliamps and 800 milliamps for the MOSFET drive or the FET drive. And then um, 600 volts and I think 300 volts. So definitely like this is like a beefy driver. I think this would be cool as like a little all-in-one board with like can on the other side. And then you just plug in your motor and you're like, you have a standalone um, can control that also has the temperature monitoring and power monitoring built in. Good pick. Yeah. Uh, Hi, on MPI.